curious. There, there, there. She followed him and soon found herself falling in a very deep hole into a strange place called Curious. Conversation. Curious. Conversation. Welcome everybody to Curious Conversations episode 18, which is the, again, Oblivion special edition, maybe we'll call it, and there's going to be a few of these. And today, Vic and I are joined by Roscoe and Dane, who I will let introduce themselves in a moment. So today, what I'm really looking to achieve and what I'm going to throw out there, this is expectation that I don't even know if will be reached, but why Vic and I feel like we want these two people here is because there's this some kind of special uh, intersection that we can see when it comes to the work that these two people do and, and the four of us as a combination between this idea of DAOs and Web3 and magic and open relating and how these sort of intersect and, and a lot of our audience, a lot of you listening uh, are very interested in, in magic and open relating and all these uh, Aquarian ways, but maybe the Web3, NFTs, DAOs go, oh, what is this? And, and to me, I see it just as like one cog turnover. And I feel like in this conversation, we're gonna achieve some kind of like, ah, uh, yeah, I see how this works. So I would love just to start off with Roscoe, if you want to introduce yourself and just let us know who you are in this Web3 space and who you are just as a human and, and maybe a little bit about how you arrived here to even be in this conversation. Yeah, thanks. Um, so I'm a I mean, just like super quick top notes on bio. I'm a co-founder of a DAO called SyncDAO. Um, so I've been working on that uh, in the ground for a couple of years before we launched just recently. And uh, so I've been through the process of creating, you know, like a governance token and all those kind of things for context. Uh, I also am a participating member in numerous other DAOs where I, you know, hold taken tokens and actively sort of like uh, play games to increase the value of those uh, businesses. Um, I'm definitely, I, I feel a bit vulnerable being in a, in a broader open relating conversation because definitely not my wheelhouse on this conversation. <laughs> There's uh, other talented people on the team or panel here for that. Um, I, I, I tried it once and, and, and fell flat on my face about eight or nine years ago, open relating, uh, mm -hmm. hilarious anxiety attacks and uh, couldn't, couldn't handle it. Um, but interestingly enough, I, I recently asked uh, Vic and Dane, like, what's all the top books on open relating? And the reason I did that is, is I see the people who are into open relating as capable of holding a frame of accepting people with multiple different points of view and coming from a different energetic space um, and being able to deal with, uh, you know, being centered in themselves rather than uh, having to like have this needy desire for everyone else on a team or in a com company or like I, I just see the crossovers and the parallels deeply um got into crypto 2016 done a whole bunch of things um including like mining and all sorts of crazy stuff just yeah been been deep in the lands for five years now that's mm -hmm. me Epic. Yeah. I, I, that's what I, I really love is like, for me, like I don't have much experience in, in DAOs, but I have experience in open relating. And I, I would love for that. Like you just to really hold that pillar of, of DAOs. And it's, it's great that you already can see that there is like, okay, what happens in open relating? I want to learn more about that. And maybe I can learn more about DAOs by just reading about something completely Different. And for anyone listening, DAOs, if you want to explain what a DAO is, just a little, just a little bit, and we'll pass it to Dane. That's good. Um, yeah, I mean, stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization, but basically it's a bunch of people who have, they're, they're operating in like a sandbox or, or a smart contract in this case, uh, where they don't need to know each other. 
and they can interact with each other in a permissionless and trustless way, meaning that they don't have to ask to work on a DAO and they don't have to necessarily trust the other people in the DAO in order to participate with them. So it's this, this really interesting dynamic of, it's kind of chaotic. It's, it's, it's pretty much like, we're just going to do this thing because we feel like we've got a shared sense of mission. That's why they might want to do it. But they also have this shared sense of anarchist style way of wanting to disrupt the world and through their actions. Mm. Yeah, I think that's relating to me. <laughs> <laughs> and Dane Thomas, who are you? Why are you here? Yo, who am I? It's always a good question, isn't it? I um, alternate between, you know, just this really humble, like, who am I? I'm just no one. I'm just the configuration of atoms. And then this really egotistical, like wanting to sound bite all the best things anyone's ever said about me and, and get them all across, you know, like this person did a magazine interview with me and they wrote rising occult star Dane Thomas. And I'm like, yes, I will take that. That's the one yes. of the better, the better bios I've been given. But um, okay, let's, let's just like DJ, re DJ rewind, Ooh. everybody introducing Dan Thomas, a, a rising occult star. Uh, could you please elaborate a little bit more on this rising occult leadership you've got going on in your life and how that's going to transition into the Web3 space? Thank you for a helpful frame, Paisley Hart. Look, I have been, I guess, a conscious entrepreneur. Let's put it, let's give it a little tangible thing for quite a while. Um, and, you know, I was a musician and an artist and which got me kind of obsessed with the hustle. So I was peddling t-shirts back in the MySpace days and mm -hmm. using social media to sell stuff pretty much from when there was social media. Um, and I've been also very fascinated and driven by human evolution, personal development, human behavioral stuff. So you know, I created a modality called the spiral. I've done a bunch of transformational work and spent a lot of time, probably like a decade in the tantra space and so on and so on. So where, where I'm finding myself sitting is a very unique convergence of media, business, personal development, human trends, human growth. And that, that's what's got me fascinated by this web three sort of space. So it's funny because I don't really think of myself as a tech person, but in then in many ways, I've, I've absorbed and used platforms as, they, as they've appeared and I've been able to see what's shit. So I'm exchanging over here. I think we should jump on that. So where I'm seeing myself and what I'm wanting to do is really help particularly spiritual people, embodied people, creative people to transition into this world that they, they may not have an easeful resonance with or they may not really understand so um i've been schooling myself in the nft space for about four to five months now and um yeah i'm wanting to support creatives and entrepreneurs and woo, -woo spiritual kids to to find their way into that realm and sooner rather than later because i, I can see what what i think you guys can see which is just some very interesting shit about to happen in the next weeks months years so Mm. That's that's where I'm positioning myself right now, I guess. Epic. All right. Yeah. All right. We're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna add the people in. And Vic, just who are you today? Who are you today on this podcast? Today, today I am just kind of a giddy child. I'm just really enjoying that. I'm hanging out with some of my best mates and talking mm. this conversation <laughs> that's been happening over some dinners and many things over the last year or so maybe two years nearly so yeah very very happy and excited to be here your cheeks look very rosy from this angle right now so it's a <laughs> giddy, giddy angle that you've got mm. so I, I so you know we have heard a bit of roscoe's side around the oh you know okay i feel like i've been burnt and open relating but now i now i want to learn about it I'm curious to hear from you, Dane, like, are you getting any of those vibes in your, in your learnings right now around open relating and how that is being brought into this Web3 space, especially around DAOs? Can you, um, I don't really understand the question. Okay, cool. Like, are you, are you seeing any parallels in, in this open relating space? 
so all the history that you have in open relating being a married man that also is in, in an open relationship uh, and this new philosophy that we have and, and you know something that i'm not as educated and roscoe will be able to teach us more but what i'm seeing in the web3 space is like you know we're removing gatekeepers and like this censorship level and and things have only got to be this way and that way and then I'm like oh my god like this is actually how I've been trying to live my life off the internet and then actually when I do it on the internet I get in trouble like all the fucking time like I'm shadow banned more times than I'm not mm. um and then I, when this is like, oh, have you heard about DAOs? And have you heard about smart contracts? And have you heard about this? I'm like, oh, like I can write things the way that I want to be to be through a smart contract. Or in these organizations here, there's not one person going, this is the way the rules should be. And uh, uh, I feel like when all the work that we've been doing in personal development and, and within our community of temple arts and relating and the eros and etc i just feel like oh on a tech level this is this is meeting my like heart and sex <clears throat> and philosophy in a way that i've never been able to curate in this journey of like mixed with entrepreneurship yeah i i think you know, me and Victoria, particularly about a lot of these conversations, like dozens and dozens of conversations around these these parallels that are happening. And um, I, I went through the kind of mystery school sort of journey and, and Hyden Temple and that kind of, you know, I really was influenced by some of that language and thinking and ISTA, International School of Temple Arts, like some of these communities and organizations I've spent a lot of time around. And it, that's where this language of like talking about the Piscean era and the Aquarian era has, has become really big in the circles that I'm moving in. And I think, you know, we're, we're comparing, you know, I wrote, I wrote a, a little tweet list about three weeks, four weeks, a month ago, whatever, around things that Web3 and open relating have in common. And I, you know, I'm sitting there laughing at it and I'm like sharing it on Twitter, which I have a very small beginning following of kind of NFT nerds and stuff. And I'm like watching like oh, three people got that, you know, but like <laughs> what I'm, I'm like, but this is deep, man. This is, this is a really <laughs> a strong transmission. And in the back of my brain's like, give it a year, retweet that tweet in a year and see what, if it, if it goes a little further, you know, but mm. what, what I'm seeing, yes, the open relationships thing, which I've been journeying for like, I guess five or six years, but four years from a committed relationship that also includes open relating polyamory, more fluid dynamics around relating. You know, it's all just about practicing new structures, I think, is what is what what I see is in common. So whether, you know, people are moving towards using DAOs instead of companies or DAOs instead of older school models of governance and and finding consensus. You know, the guys in the in the mystery school and tantra community and whatever, they've been trying to do that since the fucking 70s and 80s, you know, without without technological structures to support them. The questions around how do we do decision making that isn't one guy bossing everyone else around, but isn't hippies sitting around in a democracy circle where everyone, you know, even Sharon gets to have a voice, even though Sharon doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about. We've got to listen to every single person in the circle and it's very it's equal, but nothing ever happens. So we've got these two versions of, you know, a leader who dominates or the lack of leadership. I think what all these things have in common is, you know, as humanity, we've for a few decades been calling for more fluid structures. Like, you know, there's a, there's a lot of talk around centralized versus decentralized. And that's, that's a one big polarity conversation but what i'm seeing is actually mastery would be the ability to optimize between centralized and decentralized structures when they need it in the same way that you know if we're in a group and we're really beautifully self-organizing sometimes one person will take the lead and we'll all go oh yeah paisley paisley is the guy who leads this bit and then when your bit's done we kind of all drop back and then it goes back to oh this is now a consensus decision <gasps> it's victoria she's leading so i think for me, between open relating, seeking new methods of leadership, 
evolving technology, moving from web two to web web three, the, the, the big chunks that I see is this move from what, what we're referring to as the Piscean era, you know, astrologically speaking, it's the idea of centering around one principle, one leader, one, you know, the one true God, um, the son of God, the CEO, whatever, to this Aquarian model, which I think is very poorly understood. Like people think it's like anarchy or it's this or it's that. And, and to me, it's like, it just means we're moving into more intelligent systems. And to me, open relationship, or it's even the language open relationship is limiting because it's what I want to live is a mixture of monogamy, polyamory, celibacy, individualism, group. It's, mm. it's actually mm. the freedom to mix between all the models. It's almost like a more like a quantum relating, you know, like actually we're quite monogamous in this way. Oh no, my wife can go and date someone else. Of course she can. But the way we yeah. operate feels like monogamy to us but includes polyamorous principles. And, you know, the way you, if you do that, Paisley, you would mix and match those principles in a completely way that is your own way. And so what, yeah, what I'm excited about is this, a transition to authoring our own reality, I guess, is what, what I find exciting. And, and that's, that's what I think is common between these, these crypto tools and blockchain tools and books like PolySecure and, you know, mm. the ethical mm. slot and whatever else is like, oh, you mean you can choose your own adventure? Mm. That's that's the cool part. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm actually also really seeing is, is this is actually why so many people, especially in our community, are actually really afraid of this reality and Web 3.0. It's mm. like that piece around, you know, uh, and you pointed it out when you post the other day, Jane, it's like there's a real strong desire inside of how open the world is getting in it for simplicity. And we're yeah. seeing a lot of that. And what we're actually, but what Web3 brings us is not just, oh, this is the open relating of the world now, of the internet world. No, it's not like that. It's actually like, actually what we're bringing in is a, la a lot of layers of complexity. Yeah. And so there's not just one place that you go to church, you know, like you've got your one thing, you've one place that you know that you can go to. It's like all the one social media platform that everybody knows that we're all on. It's like, it's not like that anymore. It's like, there are many different communities and you really have to find that place of self-responsibility and actually really find yourself. Yes. So I feel like that's actually for me, another reason why I feel like this community we're a part of is going to be able to transition to this a lot easier than a lot of other people because uh, our value system is actually based on finding our own boundaries, finding our own and discovering who we really are underneath all the conditioning and the ideas and the nature that's been put onto us since birth. Yeah. this is some of the the overlaps that i'm seeing and i totally agree with everything you just shared it's an excitement about that part for me too yeah an important mm. part there as well as i feel like you need to just quickly while someone else is talking just go trademark quantum relating because i feel like <laughs> by the end of this podcast someone else is gonna have a, a course called that <laughs> so I, I've I've long accepted that the the gems that I throw away could be the best idea someone has in 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 a decade, and it's it's okay if you if you're the quantum relating person, just remember where you heard it for you are know and you'll fucking know. Okay, so just remember, uh, Roscoe. I would love to hear from out like on our side, us going. Oh yeah, this these puzzle pieces make sense to us because if we've been over in this area, but then for you, like, I don't know much of your background, what you're doing before SIGDAL, um, but I would love to hear about that transition into like, oh, I am going to create or be a part of a DAO and, and what the lessons have been for you on a, like changing your inner structures and systems and belief of like, this is how a company is meant to be made if we're using our language, like from Pisces to Aquarius of like, but whatever that means in your world, how, how that's just changed things in your life from like internal structure to external. Yeah, cool. Um, so prior to crypto in 2016, I was working in a uh, business that I had for several years called Heart Center Money Makers. So very much, you know, big believer in conscious entrepreneurship. Uh, I had a, a couple hundred students in a, you know, several hundred dollar a month program. And um, I actually got this tattoo on my arm, which is a love heart made of dollar signs. Oh, with money. Was I was looking at that in the spa the other day. I was like, what's this about? That was the uh, logo of that business. But um, 
the reason I mention all of that is, is like, I'm very much always kind of, I've always kind of been uh, secure in my thinking that business should be collaborative and it should be shared and done by a wider group of people for, you know, more positive impact in, in a multitude of ways, you know, social, economic and, and, and uh, good for the earth as well. But the um, thought that just jumped into my mind kind of off the tail of everything that Vic and Dane just shared is uh so i asked them recently as i shared before that you know what were all your suggestions for these books and i read polysecure rather quickly and i actually went on to look at uh attachment theory in teams and found a whole bunch of different papers and information on that and uh something that's really interesting to me uh and this is i'll, I'll, I'll come back around to the question but something that was really interesting to me was this idea that um I found myself as a leader in business and I've had businesses since I was 13. Um, I found myself as a leader in business. Whenever I was feeling anxious, I'd become a dictator in business, in my leadership role. I'd just be like, mm -hmm. we're going to do it this way. And we're going to do it now. Uh, when I was trying to avoid my business, uh, I'd do more one-on-one -on -one with individual team members, but I'd be really shit at holding a container for a group of people. That's like the avoidant sort of frame. And then uh, when I was secure, I was just like excited to rock up and be the leader because I knew I was going to learn something by being there and just, you know, supporting people and, and, in, and enjoying it from that way. So the reason I'm kind of tugging on this thread is because I went down this rabbit hole of trying to figure out the open relating correlations, this attachment theory piece that came out of PolySecure sort of like took me on this little thread and... Um, yeah, I've definitely found that people when they're in roles, either as a leader or as a participant, um, have a whole bunch of stuff they either project onto a situation or over expect from a situation. And th that seems to be like a lot of the, the healing processes that people can go through when it comes to opening relating and trauma release and, you know, coming back to, uh, I don't know. What do you guys say about a nervous system? You guys say something about a nervous system. <laughs> we, we do often say some things about the nervous system. We've, we've been known to say some things about that old nervous system. <laughs> Reg regulating um, is maybe what you're looking for. One of, one of those things. You do something to your nervous system. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, what I find, uh, yeah, so... The, the reason why I kind of shared all of that is, is I think I've always been um, most for the most part secure in my business um, sort of leadership style. And I do just like rocking up, putting, putting ideas or suggestions out there and then seeing what shows up and responding to it and responding to it is kind of what shows up a mission that's worthy to me. Uh, when you try and like set a 20, 20 year goal for business and whatnot, it can be a strong sort of compass direction, but it's not a good, it's, it's not really good for setting 90 day plans in my personal opinion, after doing countless years of them, because uh, especially when you're in tech, DAOs, crypto, uh, 90 days is like 1200 years. And it's just like not responsive <laughs> enough to where the market is going or what's happening. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, I'm interested in mostly interested in DAOs because I want to be able to build an organization that is leaderless at the end of the day. The, the transition is not to like reseat myself, but to create the ability for anyone to seat or unseat themselves at any point in time. And, and that for me makes the most sense to make something that's timeless. Mm. There was like a million questions alive in me. And I'm also having this little, just as you're sharing, I'm just like, it's, it's becoming a bit of a kink there where you, especially when you're making jokes about a thing, but also using our language is like, oh, this is like the podcasts I need to be listening to. <laughs> I'm out there going, oh, this podcast is great. Um, so yeah, coming back. Uh, you know, I have a little, okay. Yeah, go, go. Um, I just had a little piece to share actually around business uh, from just leading on from Roscoe's thing. So he was just sharing like his um, why, why the DAO, why DAOs have been so exciting to him from where he's come from in business. 
And I feel like I have a different place where I've met business from and why I've been so excited about DAOs, you know? Mm. So I would say that, um, you know, there's like, you know, there's NFTs, there's trading, there's um, DeFi, there's all these different parts of the Web3 world that we're kind of coming into. Um, my most excited, uh, my value system has responded the most to DAOs. And I sort of have been in the inquiry of that, like, why is that that I'm so excited about that? And I feel the open relating piece is one part, but there's also the business piece for me. So um, as a female and having a very sort of feminine way of doing a lot of things um, and having this, this piece of like, I actually don't know if I ever really wanted to have a business. I actually wanted to have a movement. And that was something that was really on my heart when I came into the world of sexuality. It's like, oh, I really actually want to see Eros integrated into society. And when I came in and created the Institute of New Paradigm Intimacy, I never had this desire that this was going to be the Vic transmission and everyone was going to have sexuality the way that I have sexuality. And, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a big drive for me to um, put my stamp on the world and make things and have everybody follow this way of doing it the way I do it. What was my deeper desire was to come in and spark something that um, could have a ripple effect that went beyond me. And when I started to learn the concepts of DAOs, I was like, oh, I can actually bring this into how I run my team and how I actually do uh, my business, which has been a lot of um, letting go of control and coming into watching the upwelling of what's possible when I don't lead the way and make something happen. But when I'm holding this vibration of like, actually, you guys get to get to create this and who you are in the world right now and the transmission that you are is eros integrating into society and just trust and i've just watched this magic happen as i've leaned back and watched all the people in my team feel their personal power coming online from being from having this leadership in a different way and not being thinking that they have to do things how i like things done and it's been really really potent to watch and and very exciting and also um very fast like what i will say is that you know the new paradigm intimacy has been running since 20 right at the end of 2019 so october october 2019 and it's already at the stage where it's got its own facilitators you know it's got its own like it's running very much without me in a lot of ways because of this system that i'm starting to see of how it can run almost like a DAO. and i will say it's a transitioning it's not like i don't think a DAO happens overnight i think Roscoe could probably <laughs> share a bit on that it's like it's not a process right like, okay we're down now everybody everybody hands in you know <laughs> like it's a, a a process and i feel that's very similar to open relating as well it's like you don't just go cool we're poly now everybody go fuck you know like you have the nervous system <laughs> must be regulated and we must open to that in a very easeful um cohesive way and it's been and i can really see the parallels of business and movements and you know social and what you guys just spoke about conscious entrepreneurship which is social movement really yeah that that's it that's it for me <laughs> i liked what you said dane recently on your podcast with atlas um i just remember this standout quote you were like it doesn't really matter if we went to like this full Mad Max reality tomorrow and there was like no power and no internet, someone would grab a stick and start a DAO. It's just where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and um, I do love that. Actually, one of the things that taught me a lot about DAOs that Vic, you shared with me, and I'd love to hear yours and Dane's riff on this, but Vic, remember when you showed me this different circles at ISTA, the, there was like the, there was the uh, I can't really remember, circle. but they, there was a wisdom circle. There was some other process where people just got up and it was like uh, the they expressed, and then they were like, "That's either it or not it." Um, those I'm different things, <laughs> those different um, containers or circles, really remind me of DAOs a lot. Like the uh, the one where you, I, I don't know what they're called, so I got no labels See, for these things. It's the, static current. The aesthetic current. Okay. Yeah. And then, so they go into a circle and they just like express something and basically they get slapped by someone with a, like tells them to get out of the circle if they're not doing the right things. That's right. Yeah. I don't okay. think we should just share that. That, that to me, that to me, it, that, that to me is identical <laughs> to crypto Twitter. That is identical to crypto Twitter to me. Like it is basically crypto Twitter. And then um, the, uh, 
What's the wisdom circle? Is that like three people or something? You guys need and to- Can I just like come in and just give a little yeah, thing? So like save me. How, I imagine, how I imagined <laughs> that is like, you know, if we give this example of going into the circle and if you come in without an, uh, without an authentic expression, people are like, hey, like get back. And an equivalent of that could be in a Twitter spaces. If I came on with board a number 30 as my profile picture, people are like, you're being inauthentic. That's not fucking you. We can check the blockchain and that's not, that's not really you. We're going to slap you around and get you out of this fucking circle. Is, is that sort of what you're relating that to? But like, there's many different ways, but there's ways of authenticity that are actually verified on things such as the blockchain, which is like the, the current of, of the ecstatic current in a certain way. Is that what do is what you mean? I just like want to make sure this is like translating to people. Yeah, somewhat, some, somewhat, somewhat. I feel like um, I feel like I can should. talk to this. I feel like I'm because uh, we've had a few conversations around this stuff, and you know, one of the things, and it's kind of feels a little awkward because like this is the deep inner esoteric operatings of the community that you don't you don't get to see. You don't just go and do one level and get to see that. Like you know, for me, I've journeyed with a lot of these people very much to the core of this thing and like, oh, this is fascinating how this works. And, but what, what I've seen in happening in body in, in some of those worlds and communities is, yeah, de it's decentralized governance essentially, but happening through the intelligence of the body. That's, that's what's going on there. And that's, that has been structured numerous ways. So from, you know, at my house tomorrow night, we're gonna have a transpersonal temple. And that means, We'll all sit in a circle. <clears throat> People will step into the circle only when they're motivated by the arising of their life force, their intuitive hit. It's my time to do something. I don't know what it is, but here it comes. And as a collective, if we would say run that circle every day for six weeks, which is, I've been in those environments, particularly at Haydn and, and so on, like what starts to happen is the intelligence of the circle itself becomes primary. So rather than, okay, Roscoe's the leader, he's, if, does he like it? Does he not like it? Which is, you know, how we do things in the, in the mainstream world. The circle itself b builds an intuitive intelligence where, you know, if such and such has got up and they're telling a story from their mind, we're like, fuck, this guy's just running his story. In certain circumstances, when people are really initiated to that, you might get a response of like, boo, shut up, we've heard it before, Paisley. And you're like, oh, you're right, I'm in my ego and you sit the fuck down, you know? And then someone else walks in who's really just in the moment and we can all feel like, fuck, did you see John? I've never seen him, what the hell was that? It wasn't even John, it was the circle speaking through him and through calibrating our bodies, our nervous systems, our listening, we've, we've temporarily created a living organism that that is far more intelligent than any person but in order to do that we've had to do various work to get our ego to get our mind out of the way in the way that i've been building my companies inside the spiral institute to a degree but in my own company to a much higher degree uh, i've started to build okay there's a void based layer there's a circle of people who all we have to do is listen to the mystery is listen to the emptiness is listen to the black hole that's not a strategic level at all it's more the mystery aligned level and then back from that we might have almost like the soul level or the solar level which is more about what is the purpose of this organism where are we going are we on our are we on our 20-year vision and then the human level you know like the, the the 3d earthbound level is this quarter did we hit our targets this month did we hit our targets this week are we doing our to-do list so we're using concentric circles that that are operating at different levels of reality. And so if I sit on the void chair, it's not about strategic goals. It's about, can I get my personality out of the way enough to listen to the current at the soul level? It's like, we're all holding hands. We all agree. We want to bring sexuality to the world or we all agree we're going to empower starving people or whatever. And at the human level, you know, much more what we'd see in traditional corporate, did you hit your KPIs and, it, and, part of the magic that I've seen in some of these organizations, which is what you're, I think, talking to is this ability to, to stack different circles and different operating systems that are attuned to a different frequency. And that, that's what, you know, I was in those worlds going, fuck, and it doesn't always work. Or sometimes they've got certain layers missing. Like, why is it no one can, you know, 
but to see um, different ways for groups of humans to orient themselves around different, what I think of as frequency bands, I think that's that's one of the things. And it's so hard to articulate. If you haven't been sitting in those rooms, the language doesn't make sense because you have to kind of feel it. And it's it's a bit the same the other way for people who are like, have never been anywhere near the crypto blockchain world. They, they need a sort of, mental and embodied reference of it but yeah that's that's my take on what what you're bringing in there which is is one of my favorite things mm. i had this like very interesting thing coming through as you're explaining and i'm feeling into like when you when these uh you know in these transpersonal spaces or in another modality that we work with of open world it's like you're going off the current and like by the end of it you know the facilitator if you like when you practice for a while the facilitator is no longer the facilitator and then all of a sudden like the person that you know in if we like talk about it in our like how we have like social currency and popularity and blah you know it's like there's a reason why roscoe and dane are on the podcast now because in our eyes they hold a certain amount of experience points in, in this conversation. You know, we wouldn't just get Linda and Bob on. But in these spaces, when you Bob start facilitating, <laughs> facilitating in a, um, in a decentralized way, like of this, like go off the hit, all of a sudden someone can like facilitate this big experience that involves everyone, you know? And then I was just going in on like, I guess is to do the inside thing and, and maybe Roscoe, you could speak a bit to this is as just imagining. So for instance, with oblivion, we've drawing in, like we've got both of you facilitating something in there. We've got all our like web to lots of experience points as, as facilitators coming on and, and giving some pieces. Um, and then also people that have experience points in the, the web three space. But then I was just imagining, ah, oh, like it'd be really great to set up a bot in like our discord or something or people that just like give information lots of it and they can level up and go okay you're allowed to facilitate something for oblivion now like you have earned facilitator role to come in and and to give us something and that's like a great way for getting people to actually embody the technology and the philosophy etc is like learn by teaching and just by teaching in the discord you actually then get a uh, a webinar or whatever that you teach everyone something and I, i'm curious to hear how that works in your business like how people are leveling up or taking on these seats and these roles like how does that work in in an actual DAO for you um zoom out even beyond my DAO and just talk about any DAO or actually Actually, any business is technically a DAO that doesn't recognize itself as one. Um, but basically, basically, it's about it's about taking like I, I could treat a traditional business, say, um, you know, Target, right? I'm gonna choose Target as my my poster child of this example. I could choose Target as um, something that I want to go in, you know, add value to, I don't want to add value to target, but the, we'll <laughs> you're stick doing it, it now by talking about it. it. <laughs> um, but I could say, I want to add value to target and I'm going to do it without asking anyone permission. And I could start up a, you know, it, one way in which I could do this very simply. And I know this will speak to a bunch of your tribe, which is I could basically become a target influencer. And I could just, you know, basically <laughs> have like my, <laughs> five-star Target reviews and, and build a network of influencers for Target. And um, I could, you know, look to affect the stock price. And the whole time I could have been buying shares or stock or whatever in Target, right? This is how essentially DAOs work, is you buy a governance token and you add value to the thing. And the, the, the inherent... Um, the inherent, uh, I guess, way in which people believe this happens is you add value to a DAO and that'll affect the token price positively. Basically, token prices actually don't correspond really that much to, um, they, 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 they correspond more to vanity metrics than they do value metrics, uh, except in DeFi. Pretty much every other DAO though is, is just 
is it pumping because people believe in it or not? It's like a belief, hopium kind of valuation. Uh, the reason I share all of that is, is like anything's a doubt. And you can basically what you have to think through is, is what is the skill set you have? You might be some, you know, tantra witch or whatever it might be. You might just go, right, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, you know, do my magic with the, the CEOs on this board and the execs on this board and the company's value is going to skyrocket. Whatever your skill set is, you can essentially interact. But what we have to peel back the layers of is um, where, do you, where do you think you need a permission slip to add value to something else on planet Earth? And, and so, so for so long, like the gatekeeper, you know, the whole removing gatekeepers conversation we have in web three and DAOs and all that sort of stuff. Um, there's never been a gatekeeper. It's always, it, there's never actually been one. Rant. Ooh. I don't know where I went. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> feeling, I'm that feeling you hit the field. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling you so much, Roscoe. I want to do the annoying, like, occupy wall street fucking poetry thing where you click your fingers you know like which i never would never do i hate that shit but it was that's that's the impulse that is run it's like yeah because i didn't want to like shout on the call <laughs> oh yes i'm so i'm so enthused but i'm so mild-mannered that i don't want to make any noise um just what you were saying there it was just hitting me so hard and and part of why is because i feel like i probably started building a conscious business mindset around 2009 2000 you know 10 2011 2012 and so much of that was just steeping myself in in a few really switched on entrepreneurs teachings and and trying to bring a spiritual orientation to how i do money and how i do value and you know, I still even in, in conscious business community get mad at people when I'm like, they don't get it. He just doesn't get that you need to create more value. Like, why is your business not making seven figures? Because you don't create seven figures and more worth of value for people. And I know that on a systemic level, you know, I'm well aware that capitalism is very unfair and the structures are very, un like it's, it's not been lost on me that the way powers are structured is, is deeply unfair and deeply imbalanced. But because I had this, this breakthrough, I guess, in my late twenties, early thirties around like, ah, oh, if you just systematically create value, add value, create value, add value, serve others, raise up others, pump out shit that serves, you cannot not grow in wealth. Like it's impossible because it's almost like you're connecting through to universal laws rather being stuck in a like you've got to climb the job ladder or you've got to you've got a scarcity market people or whatever it's like you can if you serve enough your stock goes up basically and that's you know i've come across the nft projects now in the web3 space and it, for me it seems quite easy to tell the difference between an empty project that is people are excited but it's going to die in a month versus like oh the guys at the center of this are building and creating and giving and leveraging and innovating and they're not going to stop sure no one may have recognized that they this horse is going somewhere yet so so the value hasn't gone through the roof yet but we can see and feel that the group of creators at the center of this thing are primarily focused on creation and value creation and innovation and so for me that i've been practicing that mindset for a decade plus and you know, you can do that in a traditional business. It's just that now what's happening is the models and the technology is, is sophisticated and fluid enough to like, like when you said everything's a DAO, it just doesn't know it yet kind of thing. Mm. That's just such a beautiful piece for me because I, you know, I was trying to do that inside these company corporate constructs and it's not quite perfectly built, but it, if you treat it like something that is about giving and creating, you know, number go up, like value go up. And people would then be like, how come your stuff is so successful? And it's like, oh, you must have missed the 10 years of everyday giving. And also cho choosing to call in more people with that mentality that just creates this fucking massive flow on effect. So I think, you know, for me, it's gonna be very fascinating for the web two entrepreneurs that try to come across the web three because we can blame the platform and there's definitely a lot to be left to be desired of, of these now very powerful centralized platforms 
but also the people on those platforms have learned to be takers and value extractors and essentially prostitute themselves. You know, I'll do a little picture and hopefully you give me the attention and I'll convert that into dollars. Like, and then I'll give you a little more. Whereas the people who were just, you know, the people who do have a million followers, whatever, it's like, yeah, I just love making funny videos. So I did it every day for 12 years. And funnily enough, it's gone in my favor. So I think there's a, mm. there's a spiritual lesson hidden at all this in the center of all this, that, you know, the same kind of people are going to win. It's just that these new configurations and platforms actively can encourage that. And this is one other bit I want to throw in and, and I'll, I'll take a fucking breath, but you know, there's, there's, there's so much focus on the, on the decentralization parts, which I get why people are excited about it. But to me, much more important than that is, is that we are going to do new models of ownership and that like, you know, it's the, problem with Facebook is not primarily that it's centralized. And I'm, I know, Roscoe, you could unpack this at a much greater depth than I could. But the problem is they own your shit. And, and really a world where everyone gets a piece of what they're contributing to is that that idea has been around for a long fucking time, you know, mm -hmm. but just to come into a, a, a series of sophisticated structures where, so yes, everyone who helps DT DAO gets to where it wants to go. Mm -hmm and gathers political power, gathers financial returns, gathers membership, gathers belonging, gathers trust, gathers all these currencies. Like that's almost just more aligned to like permaculture and natural system, which I think is really what excites me about this is we're moving towards more intelligent systems. Mm. Yes, yeah, two things that I hear within there that I want to respond to. So like in that, like everything is a DAO, they just don't know it is like, an example I'm, I'm highlighting you here Dane is like with the spiral is like I was always so fascinated fascinated watching it every time a new facilitator training would happen and then a new wave of people being through the spiral and whatnot it's like every time I'd see them be like oh less of what Dane thinks the spiral should be is getting taken away you know and it's like actually because there's people in Africa and there's people in Texas and somewhere here and like it's it's becoming more ageless genderless like whatever it is uh ethnicityless of like it's it's not just what Dane represents because that was the yeah. seed but then eventually yeah. it's like uh no we need to bring in these principles around like culture and we need to bring in these things around uh like sexuality and gender and it's like maybe not one of your highest values so and it's like oh that's not what i was concentrating and it's like well too bad it's coming through you know yeah and 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 the crisis that happened there and that i see in other organizations is like okay we've come in on a piscean model high confident charismatic leader here got a few gifts gonna download all that okay people come to that the thing gets a life of its own and as you rise inside that structure, as, as it becomes an intelligent form, there's a piece of like, I understand that you need to kill the leader. It's like, yeah, but I'm the leader. My <laughs> paycheck, my identity, my position in this structure is all, you know, we, we've centered, we've centered around, you know, and oh, no, like cis white male, worst possible incarnation for this, for this next generation to lead a healing movement or whatever. It's like, fuck. This would have been great in the 80s, you know? Everyone can suck <laughs> yeah, my dick yeah. and I can have Coke and make my millions. And it's like, yeah, the time for that is gone. And even <laughs> though I'm in this package, I know I know, I know the Piscean era is dying. And he, <laughs> but in 2013, I was like, I'm the Messiah, follow me, you know? And it's like, as I've gone through my own <laughs> ego deaths, that's like, fuck, <laughs> you know? And, and I watched Bruce, Bruce Lyon leading Haydn, which is literally teaching Aquarian dynamics. And then, and I, I really honor this man who is a strong charismatic Piscean leader who has had to go through the journey and, and Ista has done this as well. This is where the wisdom circle thing is interesting is like, we're the leaders. Ah, oh, but we understand that individualized leadership is not the thing, but I'm still a fucking individual and, and my individuality is what's got us to here, but I need to get off this fucking chair and, and like, learn some structures that we've never been taught like we don't have them yet and it's like you know i what what needs to happen is a bunch of diverse witch women should sit around and listen to the void but i am so fucking far away from that how the fuck do i get out of the way mm, 
Yeah, I, I, I fucking love it. It's so beautiful to watch. And like, I just remember having so many conversations with Apple, like, I'm so curious to see what this training does. Like, that was one of the most exciting things about the spiral for me is like, oh, what's going to change, you know, because mm. it's, it's, it's just leaders. It's not just like getting people just like random, it's people that are like very passionate about their message in the spiral that are like, no, like if I'm going to be a part of this, if I want to be in my integrity, things need to change and I'm going to be a voice that's going to create change in, in this mm. modality. And, and that, that was like the seeds of like, ah, oh, you know, I didn't have the language for it, but now when, I hear these words DAOs. I'm like, oh, that was just a DAO, like, like being forced in. I was like, no, 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 like uh, this yeah. other system isn't yet. So I, I really loved that. And and the other piece, like you're saying, around creating a Dane Thomas token, and and then that the that actually giving permission for a DAO. One of the best analogies I've heard for it, uh, Gary V say, is like how we have these elements in life where you discover like an underground artist you know like for instance like I found Kendrick Lamar when he was um a hype man for J-Rock and he had like just dropped a couple songs you know now he's the biggest artist in the world and, and you can have this experience of being like oh they're a sellout now you know like uh, signed to a major record label they were all about being an independent artist and whatnot and and now is like there's the opportunity to for there to be a Kendrick Lamar token, you know, and then you help create it. And all you want to do is use your web to influence the power to get Kendrick as big as possible, because then your coins become bigger and you'll never have that. Like, oh, they're a sellout. You'd be like, sell out, sell out. Yeah. You know, like, you're like, <laughs> my, my limited edition Kendrick in 2000 and whatever mixtape NFT is now worth like 400 grand. Thank you, yeah. Thank me you. and Kendrick. Go team. Yeah, yeah, we did really great. And just like yeah. how that that spreads across so many areas in life is like you want this person, this object, this business, whatever it is, to actually blow up. And and I find that like such a beautiful transition from web two to web three. Is like in web two, we really learned to be marketers you know that was the whole thing is like we're trying to market ourselves to get more likes and comments and shares and blah that's going to really work for our nfts or our whatever it is and our DAOs. Yeah. like it's like cool like everyone go out and you can even create bots that like reward you for going and doing a post on twitter or whatever that you get more experience points from that and yeah like to be an influencer and going into the, the web three space there's a certain tool that you've carried from web two into web three that's going to give you a, a a big forward step i believe i'd love to throw a question back into the pot to um particularly to victoria but anyone who wants to come off with it there is like i wonder where do you see the um the alignments and the analogies between web three and open relating as it comes to like self-worth and self-love and that kind of stuff. Mm. Well, uh, I don't know if I have a direct answer to that, but what was coming through for me, which is kind of a, a bridge to this is like what you guys are all talking about is like the lone wolf and the lone wolf experience of web 2.0. And I had almost wanted to throw a question to Roscoe about like, you know, I see what I'm seeing is like when, and also you can see that in the way of like monogamy, right? It's like, okay, I'm going to meet my husband and we're going to be a power couple and we're going to go into the world and we're going to penetrate it. We're going to create this together, build the empire, get the house, get the kids, you know, that reality. Like that is a thing, you know, and that, and sure, I'm talking about it in a more of an influencer kind of reality, but that is happening even with my mum and dad. Like my mum and dad, you know, met each other when they were like 18. They were like, yes, we've met each other early. That means we get a head start on the mortgage, you know, like, and it's just like a whole thing. And now what we're seeing is like the possibility of, and I think it's something that I've just been hearing in the community for such a long time of like, how can we all get land, get on the land, get a big property together. And, you know, and also it's a bit of a backlash from the property market that we're living in and the world that we're living in now. It's almost like we actually have been, this has been created for us as a polarity almost to what, we, what, we've, what we've seen in this kind of, lone wolf we're going to build the empire dyadic reality and then what we're seeing is and and almost in the web two you know there's no um that was incentive for me to actually come together with a group of people and create something that's bigger than me because it's it's in my advantage to remain the piscean leader or whatever 
because mm. I need to make sure that I keep as much resources as possible because there's not enough to go around. It's like a scarcity thing. Whereas one of the things that's super exciting to me about this new reality and this Web 3.0 thing is like, um, you know, I'm not in the era of my mum and dad thinking, okay, well, there's only enough love and sex and money to to do this. I need to stay with this one person and make sure we can look after our kids. Like what I'm living in now is a reality that's almost like it's almost like caught up with where I where the way I've been thinking for a long time, which is like, what happens when a bunch of people can come together and share resources? Because the governance model and the, you know, the, the power distribution is, is, makes more sense. Mm. And, and there's just much more incentive for me to come together to grow as a group, which is so much better for me because I don't feel like I ever wanted to be <laughs> the white cis man at the front of the building, you know? That was mm. not really my destiny personally. But it felt I actually at times in my life when I first got a business, I was like, fuck, I have to be a man. And I'm I'm not cut out for that. That's not that's not my makeup. And so it's been really beautiful for me to come into a relationship to like, oh, this is what's possible. Mm. There's it's sort of a question to Roscoe about like um the kind of lone wolf things that he's seeing, because I feel like you've got a bit more in depth around this. Um I remember I'm random answer um i remember when i worked in real estate when i was like 19 years old and i had this uh mentor who's like this he was like 70 something he was retiring like next year he like mentored me for a year and he, and he um ta taught me a couple of good lessons um but uh specifically specifically um the uh, thing that I really learned was that when it comes to this, like interacting with other people um, on this, on this like broader scale is that there's a lot of people who have like their intent to just hunt and kill and, you know, like do whatever. And the sentence he taught me was, you know, uh, we're a wolf pack. Basically, you know, we, we hunt together, but we eat alone. And that's very much how the crypto industry has appeared already. It's like mimicking the old Piscean systems in a lot of ways. Um, however, uh, probably about middle of the last um, middle of the last bear market, we started to see this this abundance kind of model come through with airdrops. So we saw, you know compound and stuff like this just go actually no we're just going to give away our tokens to people who are using our products and you know liquidity mining incentives and these things where they were just like this abundant like actually if there's more of us doing more things together then it's more valuable and so the the, the system very much echoed the old thing to begin with and the but what is coming through is like these regenerative crypto economics in a way where people realize that they can make a, a protocol more valuable because there's more people using, you know, infrastructure that's shared. And if it's shared by many people, then it must be valuable. Like they're, they're basically public goods. Like, you know, where does, where does the government um, of, of the world invest money and invest in things like roads and highways and hospitals and things that people have shared. And there's, and there's a real value to that. Like there's a real value to those public goods. And I think um, this is where we're moving from and towards is, you know, from having to have, um, you know, individual ownership over things towards public goods. Yeah, I, I don't, I can't remember which Illuminati camp it was that put out the quote that says, you'll own nothing and you'll love every minute of it. Like some, I'm bastardizing this quote and I don't know who it was, but um, there's, there was some quote given recently um in like uh the world economic forum maybe five ten years ago saying that humanity is moving towards a world where everyone owns nothing but they have everything they ever need kind of is the is the tldr of it and um this is because there's this idea out there in a sense that we're moving towards you know co-ownership of things obviously though um people are still hardwired to like fomo on fomo in and own things and I don't think it's going to completely go that way. I think there's 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 some midpoint. I think the things you'll own will be different to what you think you'll own. Like, you know, the last hundred years we thought we'd own a property and a this and a that and a whatever. The next uh, the next generation, you know, thanks to Web three, 
maybe our ideas won't be slaves to the the Facebook inks of the world, um, but we'll own our ideas. You know, like it, it's going to be weird what becomes the asset in the future. Um, the thing that we thought were uh, we the things we thought were valuable in the last hundred years are going to really do a number on us in the next twenty. Own my own house, no, but I've got this animated digital octopus that I own. It's worth millions. Well done. You're very rich. Yes, rich. Leave that to the grandchildren. Yeah, <laughs> totally. I but what I definitely hear within that is more than anything is like your IP is gonna really hold the most value moving forward. And that's what I heard about like DAOs. It's like what is it that you can bring to this to make value? And, and that's a something that we've not been able to hold. It's not just so. IP. Like we need to be careful not to corner, corner it as that. It's, yep. it's also a, a full range of inspired actions. Mm. You might make mm. one, you know, introduction to a DAO. You might bring, you know, a conversation to a community. You might, all sorts of things. Sorry, I just wanted mm. to no, no, make no, sure no, it take wasn't it. cornered in that corner. Good. But yeah. One thing I'd love to talk about because of to anyone listening right now, it sounds like we are perfect open relators and we've never been triggered by anything that's ever happened because of we are our nervous systems are 24 seven regulated. And that's just not the reality, or at least for me, is that I get fucking triggered in open relating. And I am curious about the like that intersection with with DAOs like is there ever times where especially within your business I'm assuming you're the founder of SyncDAO uh, is like is there ever moments where the DAO goes we're going this way and you're like fuck I don't like that like or let's collaborate with this person like no anyone but that person or whatever like the moments of having to move through like this is the way I fucking wanted it to go and it's not happening now and I don't like that I want I want control again I don't have that yet um, in my experience for two reasons. One, um, we're not driven completely by DAO decisions yet. We're going through a process called incremental decentralization. So mm-hmm. it's a pathway and, and we're not at the destination yet. And for, for how early we are and, you know, like it's still a seedling in, in a lot of ways, um, it needs a certain amount of, you know, parenting and care right now. So we have a, a ban or a veto right on the DAO, which will later burn. So meaning we won't have that veto right later, but we right now, if a malicious attempt or action that comes through, we can ban hammer it for the moment. Um, mm. But with that said, um, DAOs that have, I, I've, 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 you know, like been in communities and, and participated in other DAOs where there's been, breakups and splits and factions and all sorts of things sort of stem out of disagreements. And uh, that can quite often be what happens is, you know, like a whole new project splinters off um, and services the, the, the same problem from a very different angle with a different, uh, uh, a different approach. And for the most part, most of them have been different approaches when it comes to how they achieve things. Um, but, it, but there's been a lot of, uh, egos and you know etc involved as well um one of the uh, money is like alcohol it shows you very quickly who the idiots are when you give them a lot and that 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 happens in crypto you see really quickly you know like oh you know these guys these guys are a bunch of tools oh that guy's cool you know like you, you can kind of like get a sense very quickly um so uh yeah it's interesting um for the, I don't know if that answered the question. Did that answer the question? Yeah, it, it, it helps get clarity on my question. And yeah, I'm very curious about how that works in the future. And like, especially like imagining that and, and ideally like that Oblivion becomes a DAO at some point, right? And just for me, like, you know, like even Vic and I have talked about, like, for instance, aesthetics is like a very big piece. I'm like, no, Vic, it needs to be this way. I like aesthetics. It needs to be really fucking beautiful. It needs to look like this. All right, right. And eventually, like, Vic's the one going to me, hey, Paisley, the aesthetics are out, you know, like, <laughs> but if it became a down and someone took it aesthetically down a lane that I didn't like, you know, like how much that would tear me apart. No, we need to keep this or whatever, like just the senses of control that, that, that can happen in the future and, and how those are navigated. I'm very curious about and like- I'd just out-create the very- them. I would just out-create them. 
just create more, create more, create mm. more, create more. Like add more lead, lead that part. There's something I was in a um, open relationship conversation two nights ago, and you know me, me and my wife Mia. It's, it's really interesting that we we're starting to hold this position to a lot of people of relatively functional open relating because so much so many people have found it or they're trying it with very little blueprints or they haven't got much skills yet or they're trying to relate with other people who don't know what the fuck they're doing or whatever and and one of the things that i noticed you know someone was sharing like her her sister was giving a shit basically and saying like oh well if you're poly you should just i should be able to fuck your man and that should be fine and like this oh this and, and like this you know what was what's really landed for me as I've gone deeper down this thing and, and feel like I'm living it in a fairly stable, very easeful way is, you know, open doesn't have to mean all the way open. It doesn't mean open to all things all the times. It doesn't mean, you know, sure. Like fuck my wife on the table in front of me while I'm trying to have breakfast. Like that's, that's it's, which people seem to think, you know, it's like, that's so insanely crazy. What it means is, Within the synergy of what we're doing, we're open to all kinds of possibilities, which we, which we manage and discuss and explore. And you know, the organism of the of the two is more open and less open at different times. And you know, it what that actually looks like, rather than like a, a single um, setting on a dial that is either like open or closed or poly or mono. It's like no, no. There's about forty different dials that can be fine tuned left or right or up or down at any given time and that that creates a mix it's like a very advanced mixing, mixing desk. board yeah. it's a mixing board yeah it's not just like one cross fader okay yeah. you guys open yeah. or close you know and I, what i feel with you know the intelligent construction of organizations and and i really loved you know it's the first time i've heard the phrase um incremental decentralization roscoe but it makes perfect sense to me that w the deeper we go into experimenting and learning the more subtleties become available of like this isn't an all or nothing thing this isn't like you you take your 10 years family run business and hand it over to like an anarchist model of like okay we're now magically an intentional community where everyone gets a vote it's like whoa that's that would just cause fucking chaos but to gradually implement we're going to decentralize this part but actually this person will manage the finances because that works really well. Oh, we're going to decentralize this, but actually the aesthetics and branding will be run by this core team of people who have earned that right. Like you don't get to change the vote. doesn't get you to change the colors. I'm sorry. That's not what we're offering here. It gets you to have a, a vote in the political direction or the, what projects we take on or, you know, so it's the deeper we go back to the open relating metaphor we get to choose which parts we're opening and which parts we're not and and what is our code of conduct or our principles and you know it's it's become a humorous cliche just in this conversation of the nervous system the nervous system but the reason that is so commonly referenced by anyone who's experienced with open relating or polyamory or whatever is that's the governing limiter that's going to determine how much complexity, how much volatility, how much change a certain person can manage is going to do, it's going to come down to their physicality of like, that's, if you guys go away and do that, that is a red line for me. It will break me. I cannot just get over that. That's just, oh, if you guys want to do that, it's a mild stretch, but I hope you enjoy yourselves. And I think the word that is dropping for me is calibration. You know, like we, we have these titles of like, centralized decentralized and people just think okay so we're just going to invert the world we live in completely and it's like that is not how growth happens we we build on top and then we gradually gradually retract some of the things that we used to do that we no longer believe in but we keep the bits that work like you know and and i think that's that's what's dropping for me yeah you know this is really touching on something that's coming up for me in a lot of conversations i'm having with people on social media right now that this like they're very much like a no, I'm not going there. Like a real, like shutting the door on it. And I, and my sense is like, oh, you don't realize that Pandora's box already opened. <laughs> like this, this is already happening. There is no going back now, you know? And yeah. it's really, and like, it's almost like if it, once it's opened, you'll have no choice but to calibrate to it. Yes. And one of the pieces that I'm really bringing to this conversation is like, and like Roscoe just said, whoever ha who you give money to, you can find out who the idiots are really fast. 
Like I would like the people that are playing with this technology to not to actually be in a similar understanding of the world as we are, you know, with this kind of conscious entrepreneurship that, that, that they've been moving anyway. And I, yeah. and I guess my deepest desire is just like, <laughs> let's just start playing with this, this um, technology in the same way as we have with open relating and stuff, because we need to yeah. see how it fits on our skin and how we might like move it in the world when we've got, uh, when we have a token in the game, you know, it's like, that's what I'm excited for. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm uh, sorry. You go, Rusty. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go in a different direction. So you complete your thought. Look, I was just going to say, it's funny for me when someone is like, they're trying to choose like yes or no. It's like, oh, no, it's not a yes or no. This is coming. It's like when the internet came or it's like when fucking cars got in. It's like, well, I won't be driving one of those cars. It's like, you fucking will. You can just choose whether it's this year, five years, 10 years, 20 years, but that's coming. So yeah. And 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 finding your way in, I think, is the decision. Not not should I or shouldn't I? more like what in this is relevant to me what is you know i may never become a vr gaming addict but i'm probably going to make nfts and trade crypto and use DAOs because those things are all presenting as how they will be useful to my world that is that is my thought um so my question taking this in a different direction um how would you get how would you guys and for whoever wants to step up to the or the question um, how would you guys get a bunch of strangers on the internet to drop into regulating their nervous systems better uh, whilst they're participating in a DAO? <laughs> <laughs> and I was listening on the podcast saying just uh, mimics a finger going up a butthole. <laughs> <laughs> so like, how would you incentivize yeah. that, Dane? <laughs> how would you... <laughs> Look, one thing I just want to say before you go, Dane, is like literally this this conversation alone, like for our community is, is relating it to something that they have a tangible understanding of. Because if I was just thrown before this, thrown into like a DAO and go, you know, I'd be like, I have no framework here. Like that is relatable to me. And that's my biggest priority as like <laughs> someone that in my wealth dynamic is a star, is like my, I see my role on the onboarding of people into to DAOs, NFTs, crypto, et cetera, is like, let me just share the language that I've already been talking about on my page, on my Instagram, on my whatever for years now. Let me just use this exact same language for you, but mm. just show you how that moves over here, like how that translates to this space. Like, so bringing comfort and like knowing and just going, oh, this is just the same thing. Like, let me just move over. Like, it's just an upgraded version of what I'm already doing. That's that I feel like that's my biggest priority of keeping people's nervous systems regulated rather than because of when you say metaverse and NFTs, non fungible tokens, and it's like a blockchain. It's like, uh, yuck, like that makes no sense to me. I'm not a tech person too much. I dissociate, but if I'm like, Hey, so it's, you know, like what we're saying here, like a DAO is like open relating and here's all the ways that it uh, intersects is like, oh, makes sense. I think I'm open to DAOs now, you know, like I'm going to try and see if I can do one thing with my business so after this conversation that seems like an open relationship that, that's mm. my nervous system piece. Mm. Um, yeah, I feel what you're asking, Roscoe. It's, you know, it's already this conversation. I, I have a few kind of, higher level entrepreneurs that have been mentored by me or come and done my trainings that are coming from the innovation but but still kind of straight entrepreneur world you know so like they, they come to my world and i'm talking about buttholes and breath work and what they maybe do breath work they're, they're into like biohacking and optimization but the nervous system and the trauma conversation is very new to them and what I've observed with those guys who are success oriented they're family oriented you know they they like they're I consider them normal entrepreneurs, even though they're quite advanced at what they do. It's it's been spelling out education in in the terms of like, okay, if you want to be an optimized human, yes, mindset, great. You guys all clocked on that a while ago. In it, self talk, goals, vision, etc. They they're very good at this piece. But if you really want to be able to handle, say, in the crypto space, intense volatility, the fact that this is an ever changing environment. You need to understand that the biology that you're operating in is your is your operating system, and that's the baseline. You can't get every everyone presumably in this DAO has a body. Does everyone have a body? Great. 
we're going to need to get you some tools so you can handle the experience of being in a body that is going to get stressed, triggered, stretched, et cetera. And these basics. So I would give, you know, some basic readings like um, the body keeps the score, you know, those kind of trauma informed nervous system books. If it was my Dow and I was really wanting to educate my community, what I do is synthesize those things and make them cheap, um, easier. So, okay, that's a 16 hour read, but I've made you this two sheet PDF of, you know, nervous system pointers, parasympathetic, sympathetic, breathing, cuddling, you know, I would just spell out the basics of like uh, some markers they can check in. I'm seeing it already in the NFT trading space. It's so volatile, even winning, you know, I just fucking 20 X my investment. I just made 80 grand this morning. <sighs> it's like, okay, if we're going to do this in a sustainable way, if I had, was leading a community to that, I'd be teaching them to down regulate, to fucking chill out, to switch off. And eventually, because it's my kind of thing and where we are comfortable, I'd be like, oh, and by the way, anal massage would be great. But really, I'd be starting with breathing, you know, or like if you and your wife are doing this, can you do 20 minutes of cuddling per day, which is called co-regulation. And is in this scientific teaching, I just frame up how that's all useful to optimize and stabilize the, the operating system we're in. And I would put it in the same as Paisley's talking putting web three into embodied person language i'd put embodiment and nervous system into systems nerd language or investor language or you know whatever the category of people are and just one other bit I, what i feel is like yeah DAO's open relating i think the real metaphor is actually a DAO is like an intentional community more accurately you know it's kind of, it, for anyone who's been around that kind of stuff like we've got a permaculture community or we're going to get some land together i feel like that's the actual accurate metaphor maybe you know yeah because it has assets and and relationships it's got it's got tangibles that 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 form a part of the relationship yeah yeah which doesn't necessarily the romantic piece i think is it could be a throw-off for a lot of people like what what's yeah. I, don't, I don't understand like it's just a i read a really you go oh that's so good um the I read an amazing set of research from I think it's like the Federation of Intentional Communities, like FIC in like Norway or something. They've been studying intentional communities for like 200 years or something. And they basically like outlined like all the mistakes that could happen. Um and it, you know, talked about the failures of intentional communities over the, the years, looking at them through, you know, the 40s, 50s, 60s, like all the different sort of variations of them. And there was, it boiled down to like 10 different things you can do to kind of like mess up an intentional community. And uh, the one that stuck out for me, that's super obvious, but is, is like, they get this like um, pedestaling of the founders or whatever it might be. And there's just so much, there's so much work to do uh, to, to not be, to not be the, uh, the identity that gets put on the pedestal in a DAO mm. and still grow a DAO. It's like a, it's, it's, it's very difficult, especially when you have personal brand skills to, you know, grow something, to build something that's not resting firmly on your shoulders. It's a very interesting journey. That's something I'm journeying with at the moment, at least anyway. Mm. Yeah. I'm very excited about that with oblivion. This is like, the actually amount of times that Vic and I are going to be actually facilitating is is like we're just going to be regular people inside oblivion it's like it's more facilitated by other people so it doesn't give us hopefully the chance to get pedestal to that point of like oh, it's vegan paisley it's like no 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 you can have that about like oh, it's roscoe it's dane it's yana it's whoever you know like that it's everyone is like oh we're all up on the pedestal actually and like hey i see you you see me hopefully that's where it goes i'm sure you know, I am also being oblivious to the, the things that are ahead. But in that, I feel we've hit an hour and a half. So I feel like it might be good to do some final thoughts and uh, final pieces, anything you want anyone to take away, anything you feel like they can integrate after listening and where they can find you if they want to go further into the philosophy and business and Tao and knowledge and magic and nervous system regulating of yourself <laughs> and popcorn star whoever feels to share it's a stand up 
<laughs> it's never a solid happens. Stand -up. It's never this much silence with you two. I'll go. Um, Oh, my little bit of dessert for people is to, uh, you know, it sounds it sounds a bit clinical, but go back, like, figure out what you liked about this podcast and and go a little deeper, um, like, you know, go down a YouTube rabbit hole or a Twitter rabbit hole or something right after. Um, I think that one of the beautiful things about this journey into this space is is that there's so many threads to pull on, so satiate satiate that lead to just need to consume a bit more on the things that sort of strike interest as far as getting in touch with me i am at roscoe patterson on pretty much every uh, platform out there so r-o-s-s-c-o-p-a-d-d-i-s-o-n and uh, you can check out sync if you want which is uh s-y-n-c-d-a-o.com yeah i i think to summarize something that came up in the last sort of half hour is like, if you're listening to this and you've been, you know, obviously you're interested in this subject, but maybe you haven't gone that far yet. It's like drop the should I or shouldn't I get involved question and understand that you, it's going to involve you. This thing is going to take over the world. Like this is like being in the nineties and like the internet's coming. I don't think I'll use that though. You know, it's like you, you will. Um, so having seen those lessons of the past, I think it's, the smarter question is that, okay, in what ways do I want to interface with this? What is the healthy way for me to interface with this? You know, I see a lot of people going, I don't want to be dragged into the matrix. I'm like, motherfucker, you're commenting on Facebook every day. You're already in it. You know, what's going to happen is you now have some other choices that maybe, you know, a thing that happened for me when I got into NFTs was I ended up on Twitter more and I noticed and on Facebook and Instagram less. And I noticed the density and quality of what I was consuming was way higher. It's like, fuck, I'm non I spend an hour on here and I'm nonstop learning versus if I was an hour on Facebook, which I haven't scrolled Facebook for quite a few years, but when I was, it's just fucking human filth. It was just trash, you know? Um, and so realizing that there is, there is ways to interact with this that will, that will work for you. And the question is finding out what they are and finding out what they're not. Like for me, being in the high manic of day trading crypto or day trading NFTs, it's like, that's not really what I want to do. I want to hold cool things that I believe in and watch them grow, not be in an adrenaline cycle. And, you know, I'm finding my way with, the, with these different things. If people want to be in touch with me, you know, if they want to follow the more creative slash wizardy stuff, it's Instagram and it's Dane.Thomas. And if they want to be more curious or on the crypto NFT journey that I'm, you know, I'm not, years deep i'm sort of five six months deep really coming into this now um then it's twitter and it's dane underscore thomas and i wrote a super simple ebook for people who want to get into nfts called probably nothing you can find that on my twitter or on my instagram and it's you know 900 people read it so far and the feedback is like it's very simple so it's like it's a half an hour of your life that that even if it's not nfts for you that can be a very helpful you know, window into like, well, what's the metaverse or what's the blockchain or what's whatever. So that's, that's what I got. Check it out. If you, if you're feeling it. Cool. Very similar. Quick one from me is just like the, the recognition of like who is holding the content and the creation of these, these places like the metaverse, you know, we're <laughs> sitting in this reality at the moment where we're afraid of like, you know, I've seen these, these pictures and these memes of people in the metaverse, like, pissing themselves or like not eating for days because you know they've forgotten because they're so like that world's more real to them now it's like actually like that's already happening we're just literally sat behind a screen a lot of the time and where we're going is actually off offering this this place of um movement of of opening and recognition of like you know a lot of the stuff that i'm working on right now around this sort of gamification conversation which is a another layer of <laughs> of fun things to look at inside of like where this reality is going and it really is about how is gamification is about how we're interacting with the, the reality that we're stepping into. And for me, it's been a process of like, how much can I get people hanging out on all layers of reality, like through their mind, through their body, through the internet, also out in nature, and then bringing that back into the, the communities that they have that are worldwide. And really, like, for me, that's the optimal way that I could see the internet running is when we can see people bringing what's happening in their lives 
into a wider community so that it's touching more people. So information is moving faster. So life force energy is able to move faster through the world. So it's not censored and held down by an algorithm, but it's actually free to move because it's vibrating that loudly. So yeah, that, that's my piece. Thanks. Yeah, I want to mimic something of that, like, you know, all of us adopting into like web one when the internet came, we thought we wouldn't do it, but we did it. And it, and it was a part of our human evolution and our consciousness. And now we have web two and so all the social media, like everyone is indoctrinated. We've got dual citizenship of like the internet and real life. And, and as the shadows and, and golden shadows on both sides and, and, and it's something that has just happened and it's a part of our consciousness. And that's what I see happening with web three again, is like we're, we're going through another global like conscious shift into this paradigm. And maybe this is for another podcast, but bringing it into language that a lot of us will understand is it's like that person that pisses himself in, in the metaverse is like, that's like, oh, oh no, I don't want to be that. And that's what people see. And I see that very similar to like, hey, let's do mushrooms or ayahuasca is like, what if I have a bad trip? That's the equivalent of pissing yourself in the metaverse is like, well, there is that, that can possibly happen. And also there's this whole new expansion of your consciousness and seeing the world in a different way. And that's what I see around nfts crypto metaverse is like that it's a technological psychedelic that can expand your consciousness and that can be a whole different podcast for a whole other time but that's how i see it right now so for anyone or for everyone that is listening because you are listening is yeah come along to our discord if you want some more information we have a discord that's in both vic and i's uh link tree of instagram and whatnot that you can just start learning a bit more where just some people that are like us are talking about it and just learning and and really allowing our newbie stripes to be shown and also allowing the bits where we're starting to get a bit of knowledge in be shown uh and then there's the oblivion part of that so if you feel to sign up to oblivion if you're getting the hits like oh, okay this is where i need to be and i want to learn continue to learn from us and people like dane and roscoe and our amazing lineup of of presenters because within this you know like someone like roscoe that's here we didn't even really talk about sync dao and all of the incredible tools that are available within that and, and how that can generate new wealth in your life and and that's something i'm so excited for you to talk about when that time comes but if you feel the hits to to join oblivion please reach out to us and yeah, there's going to be many more of these conversations we're going to be putting out more podcasts creating more value and we just want regardless if you're in our program or not is for you just to adapt this technology and and to feel okay with this transition that's happening regardless so thank you so much for tuning in and sending everyone lots of love very curious there, there, there. she followed him and soon found herself falling a very deep hole into a strange place called Curious Conversation Curious Conversation Nowadays there are still girls